This is exercise 24. This is now dealing with the physiology involved with the respiratory system. So we're going to look at what are the mechanics of breathing, which is pulmonary ventilation, allowing for that, uh, bringing that air in and the exchange to occur in the lungs. Inspiration, this is when you're inhaling. How does this occur? What causes this? Well, your diaphragm and the external intercostal muscles contract. So they receive a stimulus to contract. When these muscles contract, the size of the thoracic cavity is going to increase. As you increase the volume of that thoracic cavity, you are decreasing the gas pressure, or the partial pressure as we would call it. And those two things are going to be inverse. So as you increase the volume of the thoracic cavity, you are decreasing the gas pressure. Now gas is going to be very similar to what you've already seen with diffusion in liquid, where things want to go from a high concentration to low concentration. Well naturally with pressure, gas wants to flow from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. So when you inhale and you have increased the volume of that thoracic cavity and you've decreased the gas pressure, the pressure of the gas in the thoracic cavity is now much lower than atmospheric pressure of gas. So naturally the air is going to want to go from high pressure to low pressure, so the air is essentially sucked into the lungs. This diagram is showing how the thoracic uh, cavity volume is increased with uh, when the diaphragm and the external and the coastals contract. That's why you have movement that's allowed with the ribs for the whole thoracic cage. And then when you exhale or expiration, what happens here, this is a more of a passive process. As the diaphragm, the external and the coastals are going to relax, then the rib cage basically moves downward and inward. This is decreasing the volume of the thoracic cavity. So now, once again, it's inverse. You're decreasing the volume, so that means you're increasing the gas pressure. It's now higher than atmospheric pressure, so the, the gas is going to want to flow out, and you exhale. If you forcibly exhale, that's going to now involve the contraction of your intercoastal, um, internal intercoastal muscles to kind of help to press the rib cage down. As you can see in this diagram, you're moving... Basically, the ribs are going to move down and inward, decreasing the volume of the thoracic cavity, increasing the pressure. Now, we can measure different volumes of air as it's moving in and out of the lungs to determine what your different capacities are. Uh, normal breathing rate is going to move about 500 milliliters of air. This would be called your tidal volume, or TV. On average, it's about 500, but this is going to vary depending on uh, individual circumstances. What is a person's size? What is their sex? Typically, males are able to inhale more than females. Your age. What is your physical condition? If you have an underlying uh, respiratory condition, such as asthma, certainly the volume is going to be less. The inspiratory reserve volume, or IRV, this is the amount of air that you can forcibly inhale after breathing normally. And then the expiratory or ERV is the amount of air that you can forcibly exhale after normal breathing. Residual volume, this is the amount of air that's left in the lungs after expiration. The reason you don't exhale all of the air in the lungs is number one, you want to keep the alveoli open. You don't want them to collapse. You want gas exchange to occur continuously. So even between your breaths, you want gas exchange to be occurring. So there's always some air that is left in the lungs. You can determine what is the vital capacity. So this would be the total volume, the inspiratory reserve volume, expiratory reserve volume, add it together. Dead space volume, this is the amount of air that's in all of the, like the trachea, the primary bronchi, the secondary bronchi, that hasn't reached the alveoli. Once again, not all of that air is spelled. 
The functional volume, this is the amount of air that actually is reaching what we call the respiratory zone, that area of the alveoli where the gas exchange can occur. <coughs> Excuse me. These different volumes can be measured using a spirometer. Like I say, the amount uh, that's measured depends on each individual circumstance. In this table to show um, how you can measure, how you can graph it out, and also the relationships such as vital capacity being the inspiratory, tidal volume, expiratory, all the sum of those, total lung capacity, as you would take that vital capacity plus the residual volume. So this can give you an idea as to how efficiently a patient's lungs are working depending on the volumes that you're able to measure.